um, executive ECD and special agencies first. So, you know, I think we're ready to go. What page? Yes, sir, you are live. Great. Who's calling the meeting to order? I am. Okay. I am. We have, we have a meeting of the Nonprofit Contribution Special Agencies Committee meeting. It is Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. It's 6 p.m. We're doing this via Zoom conference call. All members of the committee are present. And with the addition of Mr. Lamar, uh, Mr. Edwards, I'm sorry, Mr. Edwards is, is, is a member, Mr. Manning, and it looks like Jonathan Hayes is going to be joining us as well. So I'm going to start out by just looking at, we have this document here. Oh, you're not going to be able to see it because of my screen, but it's the page from the budget, the fiscal 2021 budget, where it breaks down executive ECD and special agencies. And on those, we have five items. These are agencies that are considered separately. Oh, there we go. Screen sharing. Thank you very much. Got it up there for you. Perfect. Magic. All right. Robert, so you will Robert, see you these. Amazing. You are amazing. These agencies are kept separate because they are governmental agencies, um, and these are these are um, well, or they fulfill ECD functions that have been pulled from the executive department budget. The Arts Council, Monhaven is a city-owned facility. The Arts Council has a board in part appointed by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. And as you can see, their request is for $24,000, the same that they have been provided the last two years. Does anyone have any questions or discussion? Let me kind of go over how we typically do these. If there's any that the only one would like to, to go through and just add to the almost a consent list. If everyone's fine with that, we can just mark those off as fine and then make a motion at the end um, for those. And if there's any others that we wanna discuss a little further, we can take those on one at a time. Are y'all good with that process? Say, I'm sorry, say that again? What we can do Please. is we'll run through each of these. Yeah. And instead of voting on every one of them, okay. if there's yeah. some that are absolutely fine and we're good about, we can just mark them off as not having to make any change and okay. we can vote on those in mass. And then the ones oh, that we have some concern with, we can vote on them one at a time. I did okay. something wrong here. Uh-oh. I could just see me. Uh-oh. Tina, you, help. You, you, you can probably get it back. I think. Yes. Uh, they, yeah, there's a little icon Peter thing. View versus gallery view. Make sure you go ahead and hit gallery view. Where is that? Oh, I'm so right sorry. Right or left, depending on if you're on a computer or an iPad. I'm on a computer. That should be upper right. Upper right. Full screen. Yeah, and swap. you'll see an icon that will say swap share screen with video. Yes. Click on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, <laughs> Alderman Sprouse. You're welcome. All right, so the first one we have is Hendersonville Arts Council, $24,000 request. $24,000 been given the two previous years. I think we're all especially familiar with the changes that have happened in the last year with um, the lease and the setup of that board. I've been very happy with what they've been able to do this last year. Um, been pleased with that result. Arlene, you're the uh, liaison, the board liaison at the Hendersonville Arts Council. Do you have any any comments, any recommendations? No, they're, they're, they're running a pretty tight ship. They're getting a ton of contributions, um, doing a lot of programs and dinners and um, really being a big outreach into the community. So I'm very pleased. Okay. Thank you for all your support on that. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this on the consent list, if that's okay. Hmm. Next on the item, we have Chamber of Commerce. Again, it's a $15,000 contribution. Uh, the same as the two previous years. Now, one thing that's not, that's not included, well, I think it's mentioned in the detail of the report, and I need to flip through those to keep up with them, is that the Hendersonville, and the Hendersonville Industrial Development Board also contributes $15,000. And the Industrial Development Board, while it does have a separate funding source, it is an entity and agency of the city of Hendersonville. So. Scott. Yes, ma'am. Is that their normal contribution, 15 also? 15, yeah. yes, 15 across the board. Yeah, it's 15 and it's been that way for at least the last two years. Okay, thank you. 
Any discussion? Any questions about that? Nope. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you okay to put this and just leave it on the consent consent list? Yeah. Okay. okay. Or I'm just going to say this. The we'll just call it the need not to amend list or just put it on the list. Next is Forward Sumner. The $5,000 is what we have done. It's the, re it's the request as well. They're also receiving um, $18,000 from the Industrial Development Board. Just to give you an idea, Robert, do you have, or who's doing the, sheen, the screen sharing? Is it, is it um, Russ or Robert? Uh, I am. I, I can share if you'd like. Yeah, I'll start, I'll start mine. Let's let Robert do it. Let's get to the page uh, on, let's go through the packet, Robert, or whoever, and yeah. get to the agency name Ford Sumner Economic Partnership, where it shows the contributions. Is this kind of what you're looking for on screen? That's exactly what I'm looking for. We'll just go to each one of these for each. We'll do this for each one of the agencies we're going through from, from now on. Perfect. So we have 5,000 from Hendersonville, 5,000 from Gallatin, Sumner County is 100,000, nothing from the state. There is an additional, like I said, there is an additional $18,000 that comes from the Hendersonville Industrial Development Board. Um, we cut this in previous years and one of the concerns was is that we wouldn't have a seat on their board. The Industrial Development Agency, Industrial Development Board has a seat on the board of Ford Sumner and we cut it to five in large part because of the benefit of the lobbyist that they engage for us with the state. Um, quite frankly, I don't know if I see the value of that lobbyist. Who's the lobbyist? I cannot remember the gentleman's name now, but he's uh, he's the one that we talked about in the board meeting. Where we talked talked in budget workshop, first budget workshop, when we were talking about the, the light synchronization, the Walton Ferry, oh, old yeah. shackle realignment. Oh God. Yeah, he's our, he's our advocate for those projects. Yeah, it worked too well. Mm. Well, what, what do you think about uh, just not giving 5,000? Can you see any repercussions of that? <clears throat> You know, I think that that I think that the good idea to do is is to see what happens if we recommend taking away that five thousand because they're still getting eighteen thousand dollars from from Hendersonville. Um, if somebody wants to show the value of it, then they can come ask us for it. Didn't didn't we uh, decrease that last year, or was that the year before? Yeah, it we was, did. It was the year. It was um. It was the year before. And then we, I think we did a similar cut because I'm showing here on the list that we did 5,000 was the actual in fiscal year 19. And we budgeted for this current, the year that we're currently in 5,000 as well. I'm, I'm kind of like Andy, I don't, I don't want to be I'm a smart aleck about it, but it really hasn't seemed to, we haven't got anything out of it. I mean, yeah, synchronization screwed up and um, the Walton Ferry, you saw, you know, Old Shackle Island thing is, is still 25 years old. And, and hey, I'm, I'm finding out what happens. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Well, I am open to a motion if someone would like to make a motion to amend. I'll make a motion to amend or remove the $5,000 to forward Sumner Economic Partnership. Mr. Edwards has made a motion to strike that 5000 and make it zero. Mr. Waters, are you the second? Yes, sir. All right, there is a motion and a proper second. Is there any additional discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye, and we have to do a voice vote. Mrs. Cunningham? Aye. Mr. Bolt? Aye. Mr. Waters? Aye. Mr. Edwards? Aye. And I vote aye as well, that is unanimous. Next, we get to the Hendersonville Public Library. Um, the request that they, we have been pretty flat with them for $50,000 the last few years. Um, that is what they probably, in the years past, they've explained that that's something that they use for collections, uh, not operations, but as a county facility, the county pays for, pays for all of their operations and hourly employees. And we want to switch over to the, um, the page for the Hendersonville Public Library. But the uh, request is an increase of $5,000 to $55,000. I, 
I have trouble doing having... that because we, uh, can I speak, Chairman? I'm yes, sorry. yes, sir, please, Mr. Bolt. Yeah, I, I think from, from my standpoint, we have, I looked on here and we have two new applicants and, uh, you know, clearly we have a budget shortfall and unless there's really special circumstances, um, I understand deleting some, um, but I'd have a lot of trouble adding to that unless somebody's got a really good reason why it needs to go up. And we can't just pick and choose, you know, we want to do it before our committee when we're asking almost across the board for the city to be able to cut back. Can I, I speak? Yes, Mrs. Cunningham. Okay, uh, I agree with Andy, but also I wanted to make a comment. Isn't our public works department taking on uh, additional uh, workload at the library, if I remember correctly, and I yes. can't remember which meeting it was at. Well, that was a while back that what, uh, at least I don't know of any current meetings, but one of the reasons that the Henderson, Hendersonville and Sumner County share the name on the deed is that enables our public work folks to go and to, and to perform any work on, on the property. And basically the, the way it's been described to me is we do we do daily regular maintenance, we don't do the large things. So we would, for example, we may replace the air conditioner filters, but we're not gonna replace the air conditioning unit. That's gonna fall, that's gonna fall onto the county. Um, but yeah, we, we do have some shared responsibility that we've taken on there with operations. I shouldn't say operations, yeah. with maintenance. Well, what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm driving at, we have taken on additional responsibilities okay. here. Uh, and I can't read and it was a recent meeting I, I can't remember maybe it was a reg, was a recent bu budget workshop or a public works meeting I can't recall but I remember Marshall had specifically uh, stated that okay well do we do Mr. Bolt did I hear you make a motion to to make that 55,000 50,000 for status quo I can, uh, make a motion to keep it at the current 50,000 and I'll second that motion well, Mr. Chairman, can I can I weigh in during discussion? Yes, uh, Chair, please, Mr. Lamar. The motion, yes, uh, Raleen's correct. We have added uh, some money, and uh, you'll see that in tomorrow night's workshop. Uh, Marshall has added some in uh, one of his line items for the pub for the library to add some additional maintenance uh, of some smaller items uh, as the library is getting older. So uh, we have added some money in that line item, uh, and you'll see that tomorrow in public works budget. Okay. Is there any other discussion about this? We have a motion and a second to amend 55,000 to 50,000. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Mrs. Cunningham? Aye. Mr. Bolt? Aye. Mr. Waters? Aye. Mr. Edwards? Aye. And I vote aye to make it <laughs> unanimous. Finally, we have on this list the Sumner County Health Department. I think we know a lot more about the health department this year than we did last year. <laughs> if they ask for more, it'd be hard to turn them down, but they, they haven't asked for any more. Yep, straight across $12,000, same as they've done in previous years. You can see that the county does a pretty good direct appropriation to fund them. And part of this is, is to help with the center that they do have, they maintain in Hendersonville. Sure. Y'all good with just leaving it on the list? Yep. So move. All righty. We don't have to make a motion on those. What we'll do is we'll, um, at the very end, when we get to the list, all of those that are being marked, I'll read them off and we'll take one vote on those. Okay. Okay. We're getting to the next section, Ashley's Place. If y'all are not familiar, Ashley's Place helps with investigations and testimony of abuse and sexual abuse victims. They are very helpful with our police department in pursuing those cases. I'll move to keep it as is. I second that. Okay. Yeah, we don't have to have any motions on no, second of this as long as we just kind of, yeah. unless anybody has any concerns, we'll just mark it no. and keep going. Just mark it, go ahead. Yes, just sir, that's great. 
Next one we have is Beach High School STARS program. This does the drug and peer counseling. The county does the significant more portion of this funding, but Hendersonville's funding increases the level of service the schools that service Hendersonville residents receive. Mm -hmm. So we get more days, more hours of counseling, counselors on system. And if you remember a couple of years ago, we actually informed them that, that station camp um, served a portion, a portion of its, of its student population came from Hendersonville and we added them to the list. So you'll see all three high schools in our conversation today. Um, STARS and has asked for a request. They're originally 12,000. They've asked for an increase to 14,000, a $2,000 increase. Does anyone have any thoughts or concerns on that? I think I if we're it. gonna go the route of leaving everything yeah. the same, I think we should leave it the same. Is that a motion? Um, well, I, I'll wait for a discussion. Okay. Do I have to make a motion to have a discussion? No, ma'am. We'll, 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 we'll be informal with that. Okay, I'll make a motion to leave it the same. Okay. I second, Mr. Chairman. There's a motion and second. Is there any discussion? Motion and a second to amend this to 12,000 from 14,000 to 12,000. We have to do a voice vote, roll call vote. Mrs. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Bolt? Yes. Mr. Waters? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. And I vote yes as well, makes it five to one. Community child care? Who's, who's the one? I'm sorry, five to zero. <laughs> I wrote zero. The ghost. <laughs> the ghost, thanks for catching that. I'm, I, write, I was writing one number and reading something else. Okay, community child care. They do really good work. Um, yeah, I'm familiar with them, but uh, uh, keep it the same. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I'll keep them on the list. We'll mark them, move to the next one. Cumberland Crisis Pregnancy Center. They do good work, I know that. There is no, their, their request does not include an increase. Just leave it the same. All right, anybody have any concerns about that? We'll move on if you don't. You know what I notice? I don't see any uh, funding from Goodlettsville. Do they not help with any of these nonprofits? I do not know. I can or, ask. Or Portland or White House or. Well, some of these are a little more, well, I'll ask. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just to throw it out there. I'll ask about, um, Community child care is more really centrally located. Cumberland Crisis Pregnancy Center does get a little bit more out in the region they support. But mm -hmm. um, let's go to decisions, choices, and options. That's kind of uh, interesting the way that those work out alphabetically. We have one um, first program deals with child care, the second program deals with pregnancy, and then the next program alphabetically deals with pregnancy prevention. It's kind of a reverse timeline there. <laughs> and another good organization that I'm familiar with. So, yeah. Russ, what do you think? We haven't heard from you yet. So. Like it. Okay. Not, so I'll just put them down as straightforward. <clears throat> Next, we have Hats Rainbow Preschool. They're the ones who work with special needs children, mm -hmm. um, both with the parents who have the children for for. I don't want to say rehabilitation, but training with the parents to make sure that they that the children are reaching the milestones as best they can, and then also working with preschool teachers in the preschool to make sure those who are serving special needs kids are able to provide those special services. Um, they are actually requesting a decrease. We had last year jumped them from 1250 to 2000, and they are requesting to go back to 1250. Really? Yes, ma'am. That's only the second time I've known in 20 years for that to happen. The other time was uh, Jason Foundation. We yeah. have to accept that. I think this is a great organization. I'd like to see them still get 2000 but... If that's what they want, though, I mean, I, I don't want to override what the request is. Yeah. Just my opinion. Do you, think it was, do you think it was an oversight on their part, Scott? 
Um, we're looking at their, let's look at their sheet. I'm, yeah, look at their sheet here. It's 2000. It's 2000 on that sheet. Yeah. Oh, Do you wow. think it's potentially a typo on this document, the, the spreadsheet, Robert? Don't know why it would be. I don't either. Yeah, can, we move do, for the can, okay. can we do 1250 unless there's some sort of typo or something? Um, yeah, what we'll do is we will, um, unless that number is higher than 2000, whatever the actual request is, y'all want to say that? Yeah. yeah, I'll make a motion to that effect. We'll give them whatever they have re actually requested as long as it does not exceed 2000. Okay. Right. Yeah, if it ends up they really requested twelve fifty, we'll leave it at twelve fifty. If it's two thousand, we'll we'll leave it at two thousand, just to allow for that to be a typo. I'll verify that, but I I'm, I'm almost certain that is a typo. Okay, I apologize. Okay, so we'll just say to leave it the same then, or do we need a vote or what? Let's go ahead and just vote on that, just because there is a variable there. It was there a motion for Mr. Edwards? Yeah, that's. A, I'll second. I, I, I'll amend, let me amend my motion. I'm just going to make a motion to make it two thousand. Okay. Yeah, I'll second that. We have a motion. We have a second. Is there any um, discussion? All right. Mrs. Cunningham? Yes. You ready to vote? Yes. Yes. Mr. Ball? Yes. Mr. Waters? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. And that makes it five to zero. To zero. No one's there. We're back to the STARS program, Hendersonville High School. They had requested the additional increase from 12,000 to 4,000. We had previously voted for the beach program to stay at 12,000. I would like to make a motion for Hendersonville to stay at 12,000 as well. Do I hear a second on that? I'll second it. As Mrs. Cunningham making the motion, Mr. Edwards making a second, is there any discussion? All right, let's vote. Ms. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Um, Mr. Bolt? Yes. Mr. Waters? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. And I make that five to zero. Next is the Hendersonville Samaritan Association. They are uh, asking for 12-5, <coughs> name that they have received in previous years. Keep it the same. I'm good with that. Anybody else have anything else to say? And again, if you don't know what the Hendersonville Samaritan Association is doing, they're doing even more of it these last few months. Mm -hmm. Homebound meals program, 9,900. Same request. They're going across. Just keep it the same. Everyone good with that? Yeah. We have Home Safe Domestic and Sexual Abuse Program. It is also status quo. Sounds good. Anybody? Have anything else? Mm -hmm. All right, now we move to the Jason Foundation. The Jason Foundation was previously, it's this current year is at 5,000. They are requesting an increase to 7,500. We increased them last year from 3,500 to 5,000. So they have been on, so that's the history there. 19, there were 3,500 budget year, 20, they're at 5,000. They're requesting 7,500 for the upcoming budget year. I mean, what's their expenses, Scott? Could you scroll down? Yeah, well here, I'll pull up the paper here. Yeah, it's a big organization. They're gigantic. Yeah, they're a national organization and mm -hmm. they, but they use our funding for local programs. Okay. Yeah, they're clearly a very good organization. And I don't think anybody would argue with that. No. Uh, I think we probably still need to keep it at its current funding, but I'm open to 
people disagreeing with that, you know, I'm, whatever, whatever y'all want is I'm, I'm okay with. I concur with the, all of my vote there, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I, I know some people in that foundation and that's a well, well organized. Yeah. I would certainly agree with the, their request here. Well, let's, so was that, I, I kind of heard two different things. Though. I heard keep yeah. them where they are, but open to change. And then Mr. Water saying open to change, it maybe change. Can I, can I make a suggestion on this one if it's okay? And yeah, I say, I say keep it keep it at its current level of, of 5,000, but I would be yes. open to whatever you guys want to do. Yeah. So whatever you all want to do is fine. <clears throat> I will yeah. admit that the fact that in years past they had asked for a decrease makes me feel that when they ask for an increase, it's just not something that they're doing to do. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this one. I'm okay with increasing this one. And what we can always do is, is after we get through the next budget workshop and it goes through committees, this committee will meet a second time to amend its minutes. And then if there's anything we have questions for, we can make adjustments at that time. Okay. So I hear, I'll just put this down that we are doing 750 or sorry, 7,500. We won't need to take any vote or anything on that. Literacy Council of Sumner County, they have requested an increase from 3,500 to 5,000. So they were at 2,500, now we're- They, they were at 3,500 and they're asking for 5,000. Didn't we give them an increase last year as well? It may have been two years prior. It was not, they, if they've received an increase, they would have received an, at least no more recently than fiscal year 19, because they were they were the same last, this current year and the previous year. Okay, I don't see that their fund balance is going to suffer. So I'm just gonna say, leave that alone. Leave that okay, the same. So I'm gonna make a motion to reduce that to 3,500 then? Yeah, and I'll second that motion. No, no, I mean, are you making the motion? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Is there a second yes. to that motion? Oh. I will second that motion. We have a motion on the floor to reduce the request of $5,000 for Literacy Council of Sumner County back to the previous year's funding of 3,500. All those in favor, I'm gonna to to do a roll call vote. Mrs. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Bolt? Yes. Mr. Waters? No. Mr. Edwards? I'm going to say no. And I vote yes on that as well. So it passes three to two. Well, we can revisit this next meeting. We can revisit this anytime we want. All right. Mid Cumberland Human Resource. Now theirs is broken into three sections because they have multiple programs that they do. They have the homemaker program, which is they actually go in and help. They help seniors stay in their homes longer by helping with some daily chores and tasks. Do they charge for that, Mr. Chairman? I'm sorry? Do they charge for that service? I do care? not believe that they do charge for that service, no. They do we not? find out. I do, I do not believe they Where's do, their but I can. Could you scroll down to their expenses? We can tell. Just, just so you know, this is the homemaker uh, expenses. <clears throat> Now they're going to be paying their expenses. They're going to be paying. Right, right. But as you can see, their income does not show any any sort of uh, any sort of um, income from charging for services. Correct. Tell, what does that me. mean? Go ahead. Sorry. Program service. What is that? I'm sorry. I don't know. That could be coming from the grant. Oh, okay. 
Now tell me what this organization, what's the name of this organization? This is the Mid-Cumberland Human Resource Agency. They do a variety oh. of projects in the area. And there are three specifically they ask for us to fund that they do in Hendersonville. And this first one is the Homemaker. And it's, uh, it's a program that allows them to um, support seniors, um, people with the, who are disabled, gives them the ability to stay in their home by giving them some assistance with uh, just simple tasks in the house. Did you say that was the same? Did you say that it was the same um, request as last year? It is. I'm sorry. It is not. I apologize. They were originally at seventy. They were originally in in nineteen at seven thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. We increased them to eighty two fifty. They are requesting an increase of ten thousand nine hundred fifty one dollars. So don't they base for, that on don't, don't they base that on the amount of residents that they serve in Hendersonville? They, they have a do. certain formula that they use. That, that's what the formula is when you yes when they when they charge us for dues, you'll see there's in the previous page. It's explaining that the dues of five thousand six hundred fifty dollars and ninety two cents is based upon a formula um, mm -hmm. based upon population. Right. Right. And I believe last year we did not pay the dues. We paid for the services, but we may have struck a portion of the dues. Be happy to, to break those programs out for ease of, if it looks better. Yeah. But the only thing that would come out of the charitable contributions is the 4,500, right? The yes. Okay. Robert, how did we get to eighty two? How did we get to eighty two fifty last year? That's a great question. I'll have to. Uh... Because I don't remember the dues being that high and the odd budsman program being that low. I'll uh, I'll I'll have. Let's that. table that one, guys. We'll hold that one to our next meeting. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Robert, can I, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I ask Robert a question? Yes, sir. Please. Uh, Robert, when you're doing this checking on this uh, organization, can you give me some update on stipulations and what they require? You know, this is hitting home to me right here, and I'd like to know a little bit more about it, if you don't mind. Sure, sure, yeah. When Mr. Say, Rose, I'll be making those calls. I'll be very happy to get that information for you. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm reading uh, what the some of the things they do. I'd like to know more about it. Thank you. all I'll be very happy to take care of that. Hey, uh, before you move on, Chairman, mm -hmm. I, I think this is a, a really good program. You know, my dad lives in Spring Hill. He's 89. He could use something like this. But I don't want it to be specific to my own situation. And so if we're trying to hold, trying to hold our, our not do increases for other organizations, uh, it'd be nice to have some sort of criteria we can use to determine whether or not to increase on, on the ones that we want to increase on. I don't know what yeah. that criteria would be. If you follow well, I will call and have a conversation analysis. with them about the increase. We've had some conversations in the past with these agencies that have, that have shown that they've had increased rent or they've had increased level of service participants in Hendersonville. Right. Uh, not just them. It. So I'll, I'll have that conversation with them. Thank and we you. leave it as is, Mr. Chairman, and vote on it later? We'll just table this one. We'll pull this one out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Rock Castle. Whoa. This is a big <laughs> one. Man. They asked for a big increase. Oh, what happened? Let's pull up. Bring mm -hmm. it up. All yours, Russ. <clears throat> I will say Rock Castle has significantly upped their game 
in the past yeah. few years of what they do. Absolutely. They are no longer a place that every so often a tour bus comes and takes a tour or that the fourth graders from the elementary school and take their tour and that's it. Um, they are doing at least one family friendly event every month. And we're not talking small, we're talking big, bring people in from, th from even outside the community. Um, I don't remember how many thousands of people they had for an Easter event that they had previously this year. Y'all are familiar with the symphony. Um, they are not, this, this would have been the third or fourth year in a row the symphony came. The symphony does not typically repeat locations for its community concerts. Um, but that's a, it's been so successful in Hendersonville, they were supposed to be coming again. Unfortunately, the symphony has canceled um, its community concerts this summer. Um, that's a big hit for Rock Castle. They're also taking a big hit because of events and weddings and even this week with graduations. But they're going to be continuing with their songwriter series. They're going to be continuing with their camps. Um, I don't know if you've been to the songwriter series. I guess I think maybe I've seen you there, Mr. Bolt. Um, it's, yeah. it's a big event. And so I think we could maybe, and I've talked with um, Mr. Gilly about this, and he's comfortable with it. I think that this is something that we should, we should very strongly consider the, the increase a portion that we should consider a significant portion of this increase coming from the hotel motel tax. This is not because of what they're doing is different than so many of these other nonprofit agencies. The service that they are providing really is tourism development um, and bringing people to these events. So, Mr. Chairman, do yes, sir. Do they, charge, do they charge these events that you just mentioned? It depends on what the event is. Um, they do like not the charge for like the, the symphony. They do not they, they charge, charge the symphony. No, they don't charge a dime for the symphony. For the songwriter nights, I think they charge five dollars a head, and maybe a maximum for a family. Um, yeah. Okay. And it just depends upon what their expense is. When they're doing something that's a, you know, when they do the the house concerts where you're going in and you're getting a dinner, and you know it's a smaller group, they may charge a, a little bit more for that. It's so low that I don't remember what it was when I chart when I paid for it last time because it just seemed to be a fair price. Okay, thank um, you. But my recommendation would be that they're asking for 35. And we do, and they previously got 9,000 from us. They want, they want a 26,000 increase. Yep. And so what I'm thinking that we would do is we take them up to 9,500 on this list with the balance going on to the hotel motel tax. What well, let me, this, go ahead. How could, how could we do that? What do you mean? You mean we'd have to amend the budget then for the hotel motel tax? When, when the list is presented for what items are being funded out of the hotel motel tax, it would include funding for Rock Castle. Well, I wouldn't have a problem. Yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. Yeah, and what that would do is the the magic of the thirty uh, the magic of the thirty five thousand dollar number is is that would make the city of Hendersonville a presenting sponsor on every one of their events. And the city of Gallatin in Sumner County gives them zero. That's just blows my mind. Yeah, I would think they would be get to get something from Sumner County through the tourism board, um, but yeah, that's you would think they are. But, uh, um, Sharon. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with what you just proposed. Um, um, but with this COVID sure. thing, do you think the, that these revenues are going to be what they're proposing here? What they're receiving grant-wise? Yeah. I mean, as far as their revenues go, uh, like admission, rentals, events. I don't I can, remember what their uh bound with their um profit and loss statement looked like last year. I'm just thinking it may substantially be different this year. Yeah, we can go and look at it between this and the next meeting. And if there's any questions we have, we can make a change. Yeah, um, if Chairman. You could. that would be good. Thank you. Mr. Bolt, did you have something? Yeah, I, just comment. Uh keep in mind that the hotel motel tax. In our current budget, we're 
for projecting a 47, and correct me if I'm wrong, 47% decrease in revenue this uh, next fiscal year. However, you know, Rock Castle, as you know, like all these organizations do really good things, but they're also a revenue generator, um, bringing people into our area to spend money. So it's a little bit different than some of the others. So um, if it's tied to um, hotel motel tax, it would be easier to be more palatable for sure. Yeah, I agree. I have a question for Robert. Okay, so Robert, it, it projected hotel motel tax for this next fiscal year says one hundred and fifty thousand. Um, of course, that's a guess. What would is all that accounted for? Explain that to me. What 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 of that is accounted for already? Well, well none of it until the board decides. Um, I don't mean that to be hands off. There is uh, a sheet that. Um, uh, Mr. Lamar uh, wanted to put on the most recent packet, uh, the very last page, um, and if uh, Andy can talk about what that is on that, if, if, if I know he's on here, um, if he wouldn't mind. Sure, you, Mr. Chairman, you want me to address that? Yes, sir, please. I didn't know you were here. Thank you. Um, yes, sir. So Robert has budgeted 150,000 for the hotel tax. Uh, my like last year, I gave a list of suggestions to the mayor. This year, I gave a list of suggestions to him and Mr. Lamar. Uh, put in there the the 26,000 increase for Rock Castle. I put in there a digital sign for the exit seven off of uh, right there at Veterans Park above the Welcome Hendersonville sign. I thought that was very important. That we get that somehow get that there for information purposes for tourism purposes and then we put in there an, another uh 54 000 to cover uh part of the special events line item in the parks so i guess the the, the important part about what you all are discussing and i think you all have said is the 26 000 increase to come from motel hotel motel tax would be different than the increase in these other things because it would be covered you know by a separate fund source other than the general fund. And I will say too, speaking for Rock Castle, they do several events that, that we could not do. We don't have the ability to host at the park. Um, for, for the city to be a presenting sponsor of them, I think is a, is a pretty good partnership going forward. Uh, I don't know every year if we need to be given 26,000 out of the hotel tax to them, but I think in this time when they've lost a lot of revenue from other loss of events, I think it's a fair ask. Just my opinion. Okay. Has yeah, I mean, I think we can... I'm sorry, Mr. We certainly... Well, I was just going to say, I think we can certainly justify that under the hotel motel tax. It's related to tourism because they're the the weddings they have there alone, I, that brings in a ton of tourism that's going to, uh, people are going to stay in local hotels. So I think we can certainly justify that. So I'll, I'll go to bat for uh, the $26,000 when it's time to vote on it. I mean, it's such a, Rock Castle is such an integral part of our community and our history. <laughs> um, so and, and we probably need to look and maybe I can talk to Mr. Gilbert about seeing if the Sumner County, if, if, if they can get some funds from their hotel motel tax from the county. That's a good I think, Mr. Chairman, I'm not 100% sure we can find this out. I think this, the Sumner County Tourism Board does sponsor certain events out there, but they wouldn't probably be listed in this sheet. Like, I, I'm pretty sure they help sponsor the symphony when they come, but I would need to do some checking with that with, with Barry Young. So, Mr. Gilly, you were saying that your, your proposed list for hotel motel tax has $26,000 for Rock Castle on there? It had twenty six for Rock Castle, 70000 for a digital sign off exit 7 and 54000 <clears> to uh, cover the special events line item at the park. Okay, so what this would require, if we're going to pursue that course of action, I think it's a good one. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Lamar, I just saw that you had your hand up. Do you do you have anything? 
No, it, it was funny because I was waiting to ask my wife to come out here. She was on the tourism <laughs> board for about five years when she was county commissioner. And I just said, hey, did uh, Barry Young have any events out there at Rock Castle while you were on the commission? She said, yeah, I think you had several, a couple of year out there. So I'll just kind of confirm with what Mr. Gilly said. Okay, great. So let's do this then. Let's. Does anyone want to make a motion that we reduce that thirty-five thousand back to nine thousand, um, so that the nine thousand will come from this this line item, and then the additional twenty-six will address with the hotel motel tax later. Did you say you want to do ninety-five hundred or nine thousand from the? Well, if if I'm I'm good either way. Um, what do you what do you? I'm good either way. Well, who knows that? Yeah. yeah, they're asking for 35,000, so let's do nine here and 26 from the okay. hotel motel. Is that a motion? That is a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, there is a motion in a second to reduce the lot item from 35,000 with 9,000 with the intention to be the balance covered by the hotel motel tax. And that's something that'll have to be voted upon separately. Um, all and, those and discussion? Yeah, you need to, yeah, just, just one point. Maybe in the uh, for next year, we remember what we did this year and have a two separate line items. They put two separate line items on their uh, their balance um, on their income statement when we uh, do it next year again. Okay. Like city of Hendersonville, hotel motel tax, city of Hendersonville contributions or something like that. Okay. Because God only knows I won't remember. <laughs> I will. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we have a motion in a second to reduce 35 to nine with the balance to come from hotel, motel, hotel. Um, do we do we have any other discussion? All right, it's ready to vote. Mrs. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Bolt? Yes. Mr. Waters? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. I vote yes, and that's five to nothing. Salvis Center? $3,000. Are y'all familiar with them? Yes. Yes. Everybody good with us keeping it the way it is? Yeah, it's a good organization. Yes. Mm -hmm. Senior Citizen Center. Again, $15,000. It's been across the board. I think that we've seen some significant investment this past year. That is a city owned facility. but our grant goes and helps them keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any, um, anybody have any questions, any concerns? Just put them on the list to keep them where they are. Yep. Uh, yes, the director is very active, does a really good job. I think it's a pretty viable organization. Yep. Next we have the sign club. I don't know what that is. That that's, is that's a group. The, excuse yeah, me. They, you want Go to ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. I was just. Yes, sir. You can answer the question. Go ahead. It is exactly what it says. It deals with sign language, hearing impairment, oh. um, making sure that that there are a significant number of um, of sign language interpreters coming up. It's it literally is that they do they do programs within the schools to teach people sign language. But they were also instrumental in getting a legislation passed at the state level. Uh, where when there's, because um, a, a lot of the uh, deaf population, especially the children, can't communicate uh, to the authorities that they're being abused. And uh, when the police go into the, these situations, then they're uh, able to, you know, take them aside and be able to use uh, their services to be able to, uh, you know, find out about these things. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah, good with keeping it across the board, 1500. Yep, yes, sir. All right, we're going to move now to the Station Camp Stars program. They have done now, theirs is a lower number than the previous because there is a lower percentage of that school's population is served as Hendersonville residents. But we did sure. add them nine thousand dollars, they're asking for an increase to 10. The other two programs we kept at status quo. Yeah, I keep the status quo here too. Is there a second to that? Second. All right, let's see any other discussion. We'll so they don't give, get anything from Gallatin and half of their kids are in Gallatin. Yep, mm. more than half. All right, 
Mrs. Cunningham. Yes. Yes. Mr. Bolt. Yes. Mr. Waters. Hmm. No. Mr. Edwards. Yes. That reduction to 9,000 passes four to one. Sumner County Casa. Catch up with that paper wise. They are requesting an increase from 2,500 to 4,000. Are y'all familiar with Casa and the program that they do? They're essentially advocates for children in the court system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, court appointed special advocates. They do a great job for the our juvenile court system. Um, well, did that increase from the year prior? No, year it's been, it was twenty five hundred year prior. Hmm. I'd say status quo. Well, looks the, like their ending balance fund is going to be positive. Russ, tell me about the program. Well, it's a court appointed out. special advocate, the juvenile court and issues involving um, uh, children, the juvenile court can appoint them to go investigate and make a report back to the juvenile court. Um, it's, they do a lot of volunteers. Um, I, I know the, the director, they do a great job. Um, I don't see where the, am I missing something as the county? Do they not contribute to this? It was not listed on the application. This is provided by the applicants. I can't believe that. Um, yeah, that's strange. If I can interject for just one moment, I was a, a certified advocate in Florida and they actually had a county office and they were completely supported, at least the office staff, by the county and then the, the advocates themselves, like myself, it was all strictly volunteer. So I would also be very, very surprised if that wasn't somehow supported by the county. Yeah, I agree with Tina. I think it's some, somehow connected with it in the county's budget. Yeah, I would think so. I know they, I think they had to cancel a recent event um, in light of the COVID-19. I would have to check with the um, director. So I, I would imagine them, like everybody else, their contributions are way down because of this. Um, Russ, do you want to put this one aside and go ask get some additional information for us? Yeah, please. Let me do that. Good. They did not list uh, Sumner County as a uh, donor for last year either. Maybe they do in kind stuff, like they'll pay their staff and stuff, or pay their rent. Yeah. Well, we'll hold off on that one. And then Sumner Spay Neuter Alliance, they're asking for 5,500, the same amount we gave them last year. The year before we gave 3,500. If you look in their application, they actually talk about the number of, of animals, of pets that were able to be spayed, neutered at low or no cost to Hendersonville residents. Keep it the same. Hmm. Keep it the same. Okay. Anybody have any? Everybody good with that? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. How many dogs and cats were Hendersonville residents? <laughs> <laughs> only I'm only kidding. I'm only joking. Well, well they wait, actually wait, listed wait, voters. Yeah, they did 528 surgeries were performed at um, no, no charge to low income persons. Of that, 114 were covered by Hendersonville's contribution. They did a total of 1,573 animals from Hendersonville in 2019. They, they did an increase. That was an increase of almost 50%. They did a so mm -hmm. when we gave them more money, they actually did more work because of it. <coughs> so there is question about sustaining at 5,500. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sumner Teen Center. We had increased them uh, this past year from 2,500 to 3,000. Their request is 5,000. 
As a disclosure, I am a member of their board. I do not receive compensation for that. As much as I would love to increase them, because I know they're a good organization and they don't get any, hardly any funding from anybody else. I, I think, I don't know what the rest of the group thinks. Gallatin has stepped it up. Um, yeah. Gallatin, Gallatin, yeah. Yeah, Gallatin has stepped it up. They have not, this was, this was new. Um, they have an additional expense this year in that they have hired for the first time a executive director, someone to go out and help with, with not just running the center, but to help with development to be able to increase the funds. How much are they paying her? Is that 80000 that I see? Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's executive director and then people who are running programs. So there, oh, okay. there's a part-time program um, employee. And then there are people who come in to do additional work, whether they're doing any sort of special skills class that they're doing, they may pay someone a small time, a small fee to come in on um, for when they do art or when they do any of their living skills classes. They, if they have someone coming in, they do spend a little bit towards that. What was last year's contribution? Did you say last year's contribution was three thousand? The previous year was twenty five hundred. How many um, kids from Hendersonville versus Gallatin or Hendersonville are they servicing? Do they break that? I think they yeah, broke, broke that well, out I, last, last I can tell you I think that. Sherry broke it out. Yeah, let me see how she broke it out. I can tell you that roughly the reports that I've seen in the past. Because um, they're still located in Gallatin, is that right, Scott? They are still located in Gallatin. They're kind of there across from Ball State. Yeah. They mm -hmm. are seeing about a third of the kids in their regular programs. Last at the breakdown, I saw about a third of their kids coming from Hendersonville, about a third oh. coming from Gallatin, and about a third coming from Wellstar in the county. Their most popular program, which is driving a lot of people from Hendersonville, is their driver's education program. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm torn. Do they have any fundraising events, Scott? Yes. They, yes. There are regular fundraising events. They've had to postpone the golf tournament that was supposed to be this past weekend. And then there's going to be a pretty significant event coming up later this year in the park. Um, it may be actually, I think, on the calendar, the first Holiday Fest event um, that's going to be, um, hmm. be, I guess, a barbecue festival. That's going to yeah, be yeah. That's what they had last year in the their their facility over there too. Yeah, and this year it's going to be, I believe, at Memorial Park. If Mr. Gilly's still with me, but that's oh, something that they're planning nice. on a larger event uh, to take the place. We lost the Honey Bee Festival. Mm -hmm. They moved to, we changed all of our beer laws for them and then they moved to Nashville. So uh, I think that the, I think the Steam Center is working with the Holiday Fest people on a barbecue event yeah. to, to take. Yes, that, that is correct. It's September be the kick, supposed to be the kickoff for Holiday Fest and a big barbecue festival and uh, dinner on the grounds at Memorial Park. Uh, actually, I think it's beer, bourbon, and barbecue, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's even better. So thanks to the Holiday Fest for getting the, I mean, for the- uh, not big on barbecue. Just thanks to the Honey Festival for helping us clarify the alcohol rules yep. and then leaving for Nashville. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. But. One one good thing come, came up. Well, they will have beer and bourbon, Alderman Bolt, so if you don't like barbecue. <laughs> but, Do yeah. you mix that together? <laughs> oh. Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, oh, a, all right. Do I have a motion either way? Anyway, <clears throat> oh gosh! If you if you're going to increase it, you're going to have to justify it. Um, I'm not against it, but if we're not going to increase, you know, the the stars program at these high schools, um, which are pretty significant programs, really great programs, you know, I don't know how you justify it, but right. um, or maybe a portion of it, or but I'll, I'll go with the majority on whatever you want to do. I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion to reduce it, their request of 4,000. 
There is a motion. Is there a second? I will make that second to reduce to 4,000. Their previous funding was three. Their request is five. Going to do a roll call vote, Mrs. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Bolt? No. Mr. Waters? No. Mr. Edwards? Yes. And I will vote yes on that. It passes three to two. Next, we have Vol State Small Business Development Center. They were funding last year. Are y'all familiar with that program? Just remind. No. It's, it's basically an incubator um, resource that they have set up at Vol State. People who are starting their own businesses, they need to know basics on how to set up accounting, how to, how to deal with employees. It is a great, it's basically, if you think about the Industrial Development Center, Industrial Development Board bringing businesses to town, in a way, the, um, the, uh, the Small Business Development Center is really the ones who's creating the folks from the entrepreneurs who are already here in town. And so they, um, we had given them their first increase in a long time this last year from 5,000 to 7,500. And Charles Alexander is the director there. He's asking for 7,500 again. They also okay. received an additional 7,500 from the Industrial Development Board. Okay. So they're asking for the same, right? Asking for the same. Yeah, that's fine. Transit Alliance in Middle Tennessee, 2,500, 2,500, 2,500, no change. Good. Anybody, everybody good with that? Yep. Looks good. Community Life Bridge, they were someone we added new last year. They handled the transportation programs for seniors. We gave them 15,000. They're asking for 15,000 again. Very good program for obvious reasons. And this is where uh, most of the drivers are volunteers, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm good. All right, we get now to the new applicants, not previously funded. The first one is Grace Place Ministry. Are y'all familiar with them? Yep. No, sir. Okay, Grace Place works with single mothers, um, particularly with families and housing issues. There may be some history with um, um, abuse or drug dependence or unemployment, but basically they, um, they treat the entire family. So they help with uh, vocational training, they help with housing, they help with any counseling that needs to be done, they help with tutoring. If you go through and see that the programs that they partner with lots of folks. So basically what they're doing is, is they're trying to, not trying, they are putting together programs that take families and make them to, and build them towards self-sufficiency. Y'all know Dinesh Van Cleve? Yes. yes. She's the director of that. She does a great job. I've, I've Alderman um, Sprouse, uh, I think I've, I've calculated so far that we've made $42,000 in reductions from requested donations. Uh -huh. So just keep that in mind when we're about to discuss new requested donations. Yes, thank you. Thank you. How, for much, how much was that, Alderman Edwards? I've calculated we've cut $42,000 in requested donations so far. Okay, uh, I had sure. this year. I had forty. Year. I had forty. But you, okay, I'll take your figure. Last year, uh, this year, we haven't cut anything though, right? From from last year to this year, in actual dollars, we're not cutting anything. Is yeah, we correct? haven't we haven't cut anything that we were previously funding, with the exception. Exactly. Yeah, well, even the one agency we thought we had, we were possibly cutting. That's a type. Looks like it's a typo. Okay. Uh, old, uh chairman. Yes. Just want to make a note that their um, main fundraiser was canceled this year on the Grace Place. Mm -hmm. yeah, Have that I'll big a, luncheon in April. Mr. Bolt? I'll make a motion to fund that. At the full 10? Yes. Okay, is there a second on that? Mm. There's no second. Do I hear an alternate? Compromise number, a motion for that? Yeah, I'll make a motion to fund it for 
I don't know what the right thing to do here is. 5,000, 4,000? I hear a motion for 5,000. Do we have a second for that? Second. I'll second 5,000. Mr. Walker seconded Mrs. Cunningham's motion of 5,000. Is there any other discussion? All right, we have a vote. 5,000, Mrs. Cunningham. Yes. Mr. Bolt. Yes. Mr. Waters. Yes. Mr. Edwards. Yes. That 5,000 is five to zero. Next, we have Run Hendersonville. That's our last one. That's a brand new one. Mr. Chairman, if I can speak on that. Please do, Mr. Gilly. Uh, I, I was not aware they were applying until I saw the packet. I will say that um, every year the Parks Department has paid for porta johns for certain events that I think are now part of this Run Hendersonville Race Series. So I think if if this money goes through, I think we would we would probably not pay for those porta johns through our Parks Department budget. The, How much are you paying church. for them, Andy? It, it gets up there six, seven hundred for the turkey trot, and you know that basically they've been putting our logo on the on the shirt. But hopefully, twenty five hundred they would put the city logo on everything they do. Are they doing the the uh, memorial classic and that kind of stuff too? I think there's four main races that they yeah. do, and uh, and I, they I, I will say this too: they also recently um, spent about seven hundred dollars to install a message board right at the start of the greenway in drake's creek our guys built it they paid for all the materials so that they and that they they've been giving back some here lately too to the to the park and i'll throw in that it's a it's a they're really good events and brings people in from outside of hendersonville some of the races are fairly large and uh it does not show, but but I uh, used to actually be a runner and been to a ton of races, and they're very well run. Russ could speak to it better than I could from the standpoint of the quality of the races. Oh, it's great. I'm actually wearing the Memorial Day Classic shirt from <laughs> last year, but the, the, they had to cancel the Memorial Day Classic this year, so I'm sure that's going to have a big impact on their uh, revenues. Yeah, people come from all over to, um, to run it. If they, even if they come from the Middle Tennessee area, they've got to go eat somewhere after. So I just wonder if um, I get if it's all accounted for, though. I, you know, maybe we can include this as part of the hotel motel tax. Well, I was what thinking. I say, what I would, if I can, Mr. Chairman, I speak to that. Yes, sir. Please do. What I might suggest is. Um, for Robert to reduce the amount that we're covering out of the general fund for the park special events by 2,500, take that down to 50, 51,500, and then create another line item on that sheet for run Hendersonville 2,500. Because I do think they do bring in people from outside the city for sure. It's revenue neutral. I don't know, if that, I don't, I don't know if that makes sense. That, that would eliminate that from this sheet, kind of like similar to what you all did last year with Holiday Fest, took the 10,000 mm -hmm. and put it in the park special events. Mm -hmm. Got a watch. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. If anybody wants to make a motion. I'll make a motion. Motion, I'll to, second use, that. motion to strike the 2,500 and Mr. Gilly will be including it as a separate line item on his budget. On the hotel tax. On the hotel okay. tax. The Robert, did you get did you get that, Robert? Still thinking on that one. Um, I understand what we're trying to do, um, but what I'm saying is we requested fifty four thousand out of the hotel tax. I understand. I take that request of fifty one thousand five hundred. And this is a five hundred one c three. Sure. Yes. Okay. But how does that, I mean, how does that equal out if the, if the, if the hotel motel tax is now, you're saying add an extra line, correct? Yes, sir. Gotcha. So. Re reduce, reduce the one line by 2,500, create an extra item of 2,500. And if it, you know, if it needs, 
because you're it's not neutral because the general fund is is now funding 2500 of your special events <clears throat> in addition it's it's a swap i mean you're just you're six one way half dozen another right I'm not saying I'm against it. I just just want to make sure we all understood. All right. What's the end end uh, result of this last year versus this year? Does anybody have a running total yet? Be more this year. Yeah. Uh, didn't we cut out Ford Sumner though? Is that what we did? We, we did cut out. We did cut out five from Ford Sumner. And we had a few. But we others. added five for the Grace Place. Then there's one or two others. I think we added two. You wanted? Yeah, to talk? We, oh, sorry. I didn't well, I don't think we added anything. Well, we added, but we added over last year. We didn't add. Let's see. Right. What's the number you're looking for? I can tell you. What our new total is, what the 20, what the fiscal year 21 request, the new total is. Okay, 286,601. What's that again, Robert? 200 and uh, 286,601. And previously that was 273,150. 13,000 increase. We're going to have a hard time justifying an increase in anything of that our yeah. budget yeah. for this yeah. year. You are right. I mean, I'm having second thoughts about it, even adding anything. Yeah, I agree I, with you. I think I'd be more comfortable adding new ones and not increasing existing ones, but that would be, and not even adding new ones necessarily at, at what they're asking, but. Um, but I'd be more interested in spreading the wealth and increasing more participants than increasing contributions to those that are, you know, that are already existing, if that makes any sense. It does. And I'm trying to find where we did increases and other than Jason foundation. I mean, we did an increase to rock castle, but that was through a different line item, but I'm looking at the Jason foundation. There was $2,500 increase there over last year. We didn't have to vote on that because we're keeping the, that was keeping the request what's already in the budget i'm going mm -hmm. through we we corrected uh my mistake on hats for rainbow preschool right right 500 for jason and then that'll be let's see here so five thousand a thousand for the teen center mm -hmm. five thousand for grace place five thousand for grace place and we haven't determined it and and uh we hadn't voted. I don't think we voted on Ron Hendersonville yet. I think we were just right. So right. That, that would drop. In. That would yeah. drop twenty five hundred. Well, I mean, we better have some good justification for anything. Any any increases? What do we do on Rock Castle, Mr. Chairman? Rock Castle, we were keeping them at their nine thousand from this line item, and then Mr. Gilly was going to add twenty six thousand to the the uh, hotel motel tax. Oh, okay. Okay, I have a thought on that. Scott, okay. uh, Rock Castle, why can't we put all of Rock Castle in the hotel motel tax? Well, I don't know about that. I think that there's, I think that there's some stuff that still fits with Rock Castle that is less tourism and still local education and community development. Okay. And I, I, and and the hotel motel tax is not a limitless resource. None of our none of our pots are limited re, limitless resources. But um, it would make it very tough that if next year we don't do anything in the hotel motel tax with them, it would make it very tough to slide them back into this budget. Okay, it's a question. I'm just trying to look at look I, I for think, options here. I think what we could do is is that we could look at making some reductions of what we've already what we've already done, if there's any places that we want to cut. And we are not required to take any vote right now. I mean, we have a list, we can update this spreadsheet can get some additional information and we can meet a second time if folks want to start talking about cuts. Okay, I, I think I'd like to meet a second time to review what we changed 
and for, especially the ones that we increase. I agree. I agree with that, Mr. Chairman. I okay. think we need to we need to evaluate this right here. I'll get with Robert. I'm going to get some of the additional information that's been requested in this meeting. Um, Robert, I'll get with you. We'll update the spreadsheet mm -hmm. and we'll we'll put it out and we will have our second. We, tra we traditionally have a second meeting anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so this one will just be a little bit more um, substantial than the typical section. section can, can, we, can we do this on the next one? Just show um, that this is additional work for somebody. And if it's Robert, I know he doesn't have anything else to do, you know, with the budget <laughs> and all, but, you know, kind of put in here what, uh, uh, you know, what is requested for 20, what's requested for 2021, and then what we actually sort of agreed to in this meeting kind of in a different, you know, wherever we increased it or decreased it, just for those line items. Um, yeah, so we kind of have a reference point there. Um, does that make sense, Robert? Absolutely. I'll uh, I'll edit this. I, I can add a line or edit this line to just say. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, just, have a column that just says, um, says committee, for, committee first consideration or something like that. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Sounds good. Yeah, that would be I'll, good. All right, we have oh. other members here who uh, change out of my pajamas. <laughs> well, get off the camera before you do that. So, uh, Mr. Hayes, do you have anything to say? Any input? You're Turn mute. mute. You're muted. I'm not showing that he is. I think it's his microphone. Uh, yeah, you're not. Yeah, you're you're showing on here. I'm gonna mute you, and then I'm gonna unmute you again. Let's try that. No, we can't hear him. We could just dub something over him. He's good. He's good. All right. We've also had. Um, can we adjourn, Mr. Chairman? Well, we also have Mr. Kirk. Mr. Kirk has been here. If there's anything that he has to say, any questions? No, thank you, Alderman. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. There being no other business, um, we're going to stand adjourned. Oh, no, I had, had two quick things before yes, we leave. Sir. I, I would propose tentatively that the uh, okay who who um, is the uh, head of that run Henderson bill is that Mauricio Sanchez? I believe so. Yes. I wonder if uh, we could reach out to him and if we would contribute fifteen hundred if we could be listed as a sponsor on every run this fiscal year. Fifteen hundred instead of twenty five. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I would say if we tentatively reduce it to fifteen hundred. I mean, it's not a quid pro quo, but see if if he would be willing to list us the city of Hendersonville as sponsors on all the runs. Uh, I'll certainly ask. I don't know how fifteen hundred fits into the scheme of things relative to um, sponsors and all that, but that's that I'm happy to ask. I, 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 I'll text him here in a few minutes, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, what what about just think about this for next time? What if what if we just were kind of like with Holiday Fest last year? You all put the ten thousand in our special events line item. What if we just agree to don't even have a line item in the hotel tax for Run Hendersonville? Just uh, just agree that I'll spend up to fifteen hundred out of our special events line item in the parks budget that's already been requested. Yeah. For Run Hendersonville. And that, now that would have a net zero. That would help the general fund. And, I, and what I, I like that. about that is, is it lets our parks department manage what's going on with that. I mean, if they need help with T-shirts or they need help with Porta Johns, we'll we'll spend up to fifteen hundred. Good idea. Good. Oh. Okay. Am I still? Are we still willing to fund it fifteen hundred, or is that going to come out of or no? Parks. Parks. Yeah. So you're saying a zero line know. item on here? In I'd say a zero line item on there. Leave the hotel tax request at fifty-four thousand for for special events, and just just uh, basically give my word that I'll spend up to fifteen hundred out of our budget. Mr. Lamar could kind of weigh in on that. What's been done in the past, but um, I have no problem with that. And we could okay. communicate that to the. Uh... Oh, yeah, Mr. Mauricio. Is there is there a motion on that, or are we just going to wait and talk about that next time? We can make a motion on it now. All right. Is that a motion, Mrs. Cunningham? Yeah, I, I'll make the motion. Is there a That's second? That's a good idea. I'll second it. Mr. Edwards, some second. Ms. Mrs. Cunningham made the motion. So we're looking at reducing the line item here of twenty five hundred 
to zero with $1,500 ultimately showing up under special events line item um, in the parks department budget. Yes. And we're gonna take, this will take the vote on this, Mrs. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Uh, Bolt? Yes. Mr. Waters? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. That passes five to zero. That's all the items that we've gone through here. Robert, I'll get with you and uh, go through the list, make sure we have the same numbers. Uh, committee, looks thank like you. Mr. Lamar, looks like Mr. Lamar would like oh, to Mr. say something, Lamar. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I just, I just had a question, and, and uh, Alderman Cunningham brought up a good point. When we meet tomorrow night for the workshop, uh, these some of these items on here that we've given a little bit of a bump to, it's going to be hard to swallow when we tell the employees there's no cost of living, no merit, no new positions, and things like that. So, again, I'm just I'm cautioning us. Uh, leaving the same status quo, I'm, I'm fine with, but we just uh, we just need to be careful be, so that we don't uh, we don't do something we, we're gonna. I'm, I'm glad we're gonna have another meeting after our workshop tomorrow night because it'll, it'll yeah. let us see kind of where we are tomorrow night. Yeah, I, I I think so too. This we haven't had as tough of a year. It's it's been more than ten years since we've had something like this, so it's gonna take it's going to take a good second pass through on this one, unless we just went ahead and said, we're going to cut everything 10%. And I hate to do that. Anybody that's lost events and things like that. Let me look at the city, look at Andy, look at us. Mm -hmm. uh, the city's lost so much too. And so everybody's in the same boat. So uh, I just, I just want to caution us and, and we'll just move forward and see what happens tomorrow night. Sounds good. Anybody? Mr. Have Chair? Any? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And on the same note, uh, I realize that a lot of these agencies and 501c3s are suffering because They've had yeah. canceled events for their fundraising, uh, you know, and, and they're being asked to provide more services to our citizens. Um, I know that they're hurting too, but we need to be really, really careful here. So that's, yeah. this is from you talking from your mother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, my goal on this one is, is, is it's the same as it is every year, that we may not unanimously agree on each of the line items in this report, but at the end of the report, we come up with a, we come up with a, a total oh, that shit. all of us can support. Yeah. So I appreciate the compromise on this and we'll have to have a little bit more coming up. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody, anything else for anybody else? Thank you for all your hard work on this, Alderman Sprouse. Yeah, I, know I really appreciate you. Knowing Thank you, Scott. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank Can you I make all. a motion to adjourn? Yes, yes, I have a motion to adjourn. We need to second. We need to. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to do a vote on this one. Roll call, Mrs. Cunningham. Yes. Mr. Edwards. Yes. yes. Mr. Waters. Yes, sir. Mr. Bolt. Yes. And I make that unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll talk about. Right. I think uh, 